Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone SE and the Pixel 4a are the latest least expensive offerings from both iPhone or Apple and Google with their Pixel lineup. And so I wanted to help you decide which one would be best for you. And this will be based on everything from price to specs and a comparison of cameras and much more. Now at this point, you've probably already determined that using iOS or Android is fine with you, but you're looking for the best value and what will work best for you. And so if you want to jump to any specific section of this video, check the time codes in the description below. Now, the first thing is the price and the colors. So with the iPhone SE, you can see this is the red version or the product red version. And the iPhone SE is a little bit more expensive for 2020. It comes in at $399 and goes up to $549. It comes in 64, 128 or 256 gigabytes. And the storage is not upgradable. You also have three different color options. So you have the red one that I'm showing you here, as well as white and black, as far as your options go there. Now, when it comes to the Pixel 4a, it's much simpler. You have one simple option. You have a $349 price tag, which gives you 128 gigabytes of non-upgradable storage, and you get one color, just black. And so the just black color is a black plastic on the back, and then you've got a bluish green power button on the side. Now, when it comes to the overall size and build, well, you can see the size comparison next to each other. The Pixel 4a is slightly taller and is very similar in width, but is a little bit wider, just a little bit. But the actual weight of them is very similar. So with the iPhone SE, it comes in at 5.22 ounces or 148 grams. With the Pixel 4a, it's 5.04 ounces or 143 grams. And so they are very similar in weight. The Pixel 4a does feel a little bit lighter because it is, but it's very, very similar. Now the iPhone SE does feel built a little bit better in that it's glass front and back, as well as an aluminum frame around the outside edge. Just like every other iPhone, you have your power sleep wake button on the right side. And then on the iPhone SE, you have your SIM card tray below that. And then on the bottom of the phone, you have your speakers and microphone as well as your lightning adapter. And then on the other side, you have your volume buttons along with your silent switch or vibrate switch on the top. There's nothing else. And then we've got our cameras front and back. We'll talk more about the cameras in a moment, but with the pixel 4a, you get a little extra with a headphone jack on the top. So on the top, you've got a headphone jack and your microphone. Then on the right hand side, you've got your power sleep wake button along with a volume rocker on the bottom. You have USB C along with a speaker and microphone. And then on the other side, again, you have a SIM card tray slot. Now these SIM card trays hold one SIM card on each device. You do have an eSIM option, so you can have dual SIMs that way, but it doesn't hold two physical SIMs together. So you've got that as far as an option. So you can use a physical SIM and an eSIM. When it comes to unlocking the phones, they both have fingerprint sensors. So the iPhone SE, for example, has touch ID, which is really fast. And the pixel 4a has pixel imprint, which is also very fast. So if I just press my finger on the back of the phone, it's already unlocked. I'll do that again again so you can see and it unlocks nice and quick you can also use the fingerprint sensor to pull down notifications which you probably have already seen me doing by accident now with the pixel 4a it is not glass it's plastic but it feels very premium so you've got glass on the front of course and then a premium feeling back that's plastic which will help with drops compared to say the iphone se and the iphone se is the only one with an ip rating so the iphone se has an ip67 rating so water resistance for up to 30 minutes at one meter. The Pixel 4a does not have that at all, but the Pixel 4a does have some great specs as far as its display. With the iPhone SE, we have a 4.7 inch LCD. It's 1,334 by 750 pixels for its resolution, and then it's 326 pixels per inch. It includes True Tone, has wide color P3, and can go up to 625 nits of brightness. It's a pretty bright display, but technically it's not as bright as the pixel 4a it also has haptic touch so you can press and hold on an icon and it'll pop up just like you had 3d touch in the past with the pixel 4a it has a little bit better display as far as resolution it's a 5.8 inch oled display that's 1080 by 2340 and has 443 pixels per inch it supports HDR, has an always on display, and depending on the actual test you find, it can go up to 653 nits of brightness. That's according to Tom's guide who actually measured it. So you'll see we're at about three quarter brightness. If I turn it all the way up, 
it's, it's going to be a little bit blown out on the camera, but you get the idea. So it's pretty good that way. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the iPhone is an LCD display and the pixel is an OLED display. And that means this pixel has PWM or pulse width modulation that actually controls brightness of the display by blinking it faster or slower. You can't see this with your eyes, but it can cause headaches. So as you can see here, as you adjust the brightness on the pixel 4a, the screen will flash faster or slower where it won't do that at all on an iPhone SE. So if you're sensitive to this sort of flashing lights or anything like that, I would go with the iPhone SE as that may cause you headaches. It seems to be about one in 10 people have this issue. Now, when it comes to viewing angles, they're both pretty good. As you can see here, they look good from any angle, basically, like I said, they're nice and bright. Now, when it comes to the actual ability of each display to play higher resolution video, well, the iPhone SE could technically play 4K once iOS 14 is out, or it may be out by the time you're watching this video, because it includes the VP9 codec that allows for 4K video. However, YouTube and Apple have to allow this. So you probably won't see that resolution, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense on a display like this, because it technically isn't up to 4K. So you may get a better better bit rate, but it's not up to 4k. So you have a 1080p option here. And this is my iPhone or my Apple watch series Four review, and it's in 4k HDR. So I can show you if it has HDR content. So on the pixel 4a, for example, it's not a 4k display either, but it is an HDR display. And so when you go to this video, you'll see that we have up to 1080p, but in HDR. So you'll see the more vibrant content and also deeper blacks when you're watching this type of video. Now, when it comes to the speakers, both of them are very loud. They have a very good stereo sound to them. In fact, at first, I didn't think the Pixel 4a had stereo sound, but first take a listen to the iPhone SE, and then you can hear the Pixel 4a, and let me know which one you think is best in the comments below. So in that situation, I would say the iPhone SE sounds a little bit better. It's a little bit more crisp and clear, but both of them are equally good. As far as it's stereo sound, they both project well out of both the top speakers and the bottom speakers at the same time. So I think anyone using these phones would be pretty happy with that. It'll just be a little bit better with the iPhone SE in my experience. Now, when it comes to the specs of the phone, this is where they're technically very different because the iPhone SE from 2020 has the latest Apple CPU in it with the A13 Bionic CPU and the third generation neural engine, along with three gigabytes of RAM. And you may think three gigabytes of RAM isn't enough, but in an iPhone, it seems to handle that without a problem. And I'll show you some of that a little bit later with different games and things. Now with the Pixel 4a, it has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G CPU in it with six gigabytes of RAM. So it definitely has more RAM, maybe for multitasking, but the CPU is technically a little bit slower than what we have with the iPhone SE. So that's where it's a little bit of a step back, but it is quite a bit less expensive for what you're getting. So when it comes to the actual performance of these devices, that's where they may be a little bit different. So I've installed some games as well as some other tests that we'll do, but let's go ahead and open asphalt nine and see how it handles the frame rates. So I haven't opened it on the iPhone SE before, but you'll see it loaded a little bit slower than it did on the Pixel 4a, but they're both still loading at about the same rate. So I have the game loaded up on both phones. Let's go ahead and hit resume just so you can see the different frame rates, what it looks like. We can boost here a little bit, see what it looks like. And this is just the early tutorial. I don't normally play this game on this phone, but this gives you an idea of what it's like as far as playing games. So it seems to be okay as far as that goes. So let's go, go ahead and go home. Now, as I load the next game, one thing to know is the iPhone did get a little bit warm on the back. So far, the Pixel 4a is not warm at all, and it's okay for the iPhone to get warm when it's actually doing heavy processing. Other phones will do the same, but so far, the Pixel 4a isn't really warm at all. Now, with the Pixel 4a, it seems to have decent frame rates as well. It's handling the game without any problem, 
And as you can see, I'm just sort of breezing through it. And one nice thing is it's not really heating up at all. I do feel it getting a little bit warm, but it's not hot to the touch or anything like that. The iPhone SE seems to be much warmer when I'm actually holding it and playing an, an intensive game. So as you can see here, it's again, smooth frame rates, but it is getting a little bit warmer than the pixel 4a. Now, one final test that will really push the CPUs and the memory in these devices is exporting a 4k video. Now I've set that up using power director. So let's go ahead and go into that. It's the same app on both with the same video loaded in both. So I have projects here that I've worked on. They're identical. So if I edit the project on both, you'll see in the timeline, it's the same clip. And what I've done is put a title on it. It's a little title up there. I've split the clip and then added another one to itself. So let's go ahead and try and export this and see what kind of speed they get when doing that. Now I've got both videos ready to export in 4k. Let's go ahead and hit produce. So it exports and see which one's quicker. So that was a little bit surprising to me. The Pixel 4a was a little bit faster there. And if I hit play now, bring it up in photos, and you'll see it's very similar video. So we've got the same thing going on. It's a 4K video, and those, those results actually surprised me a bit. And so the back of the phones, they're not really warm at all and they both did a great job. Now let's talk about the cameras. Now when it comes to the forward facing cameras, both of them have decent cameras. The iPhone SE has a seven megapixel F 2.2 aperture lens and can record up to 1080p 30. When it comes to the pixel 4a, it's got an eight megapixel F 2.0 aperture lens with 1080p video capability as well. So let's take a look at a video sample so you can see which one's better. And also you can hear the microphones. Here's the forward facing cameras of the iPhone SE and the Pixel 4a. And so both of them look okay, but in the display that I'm seeing, the iPhone SE looks a lot more blown out in the background as compared to the Pixel 4a. It seems to be doing a better job as far as dynamic range. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And hopefully you can hear the difference in audio as well over all the cicadas or whatever's going on in the background. Now, when it comes to the back of the phones, both of them only have one camera lens, but they're both decent cameras. The iPhone SE has a 12 megapixel camera with an F 1.8 aperture and can record up to 4k 60 when it comes to video. So if I switch over to video here, you'll see that we have 4k 60 for a video recording option. When it comes to the pixel 4a, it's a 12.2 megapixel camera with an F 1.7 aperture and it can record in 4k 30. So you've only got one 4k option when you switch over to video you'll see here if we bring in the options it just says 4k ultra high resolution and i confirmed it. it's 29.97 p or basically 30 p so you've got those capabilities let's take a look at what the cameras can do as far as their picture capability as well as some of the video samples as well In my opinion, the Pixel 4a does take the better photos, but the iPhone SE takes better video in my experience. So it just depends what you're using them for and which thing is more important to you.
Now, when it comes to battery life, the iPhone SE is actually lacking a little bit as compared to the Pixel 4a. So it has a 1,821 milliamp hour battery and it can fast charge, but it's not included in the box. You've got the simple five watt charger that comes with iPhones of the past and you don't have that capability. However, what you do have is wireless charging because it has a glass back. You can set it on a wireless charger and charge it that way. Now you will get about five hours or so of screen on time, depending on what your normal usage is and the battery will last you throughout the day if you're not a heavy user otherwise you'll find yourself charging it throughout the day so just in general expect it to get about five hours based on many different people online as well as my own experience most people are seeing that with a fast charger you can charge it about 50 percent in 30 minutes when it comes to the Pixel 4a, it has a much larger 3,140 milliamp hour battery. It also can charge at 18 watts and the fast charger is included. You'll get the same 50% charge or so in 30 minutes, but it gets six to seven hours of screen on time as compared to the five hours that you get with the iPhone SE. So if battery is of most importance, the Pixel 4a is probably going to get you a little bit better battery life overall based on what you're doing. So just keep that in mind, but you don't have wireless charging, even though it has a plastic back, you don't have wireless charging as an option. Now, finally, when it comes to iOS updates, well, the iPhone SE will probably be supported for about five years, given Apple's track record, expect about five years of usage with the pixel 4a you're guaranteed three years of updates from Google. So it depends on how often you update your phone. If you update your phone every couple of years, then the 4a is fine that way. If you want to keep your phone very long term, well, you may want to opt for the iPhone SE. You'll have consistent updates for many, many years. Both operating systems work really well. Both of them have great cameras for the price, and I think offer a, a very convincing package for most people that love either Android or iOS and want something that doesn't cost a thousand dollars. In fact, for an iPhone 11 pro max, you could get three iPhone SEs. So this is a very value priced device that has the CPU of the higher end phones with the pixel 4a. You've got a very high end camera that you get basically the same photos as you do with the pixel 4 XL and maybe future pixel five devices but you don't have some of the other features with it. So it just depends on what you want as far as that goes. So if you're picking which one is best for you, when it comes down to it, I would pick which operating system works best for you. If you're in an iPhone environment, maybe you have a Mac, maybe you have an iPad, the iPhone may work best for you, especially if you're tied into iMessage. However, if you're not tied into that, give the pixel 4a a try as it will work really well with any other device, windows or or Mac or whatever you have as well. Both are great. I can highly recommend both, but it really just boils down to which one works best for you. So hopefully that helped you determine which one will work best for you. Let me know which one you would choose in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.